spiritual seeker how does one look at the event where uh, jesus was uh, put on the the cross what is the significance of that event and what what exactly happened can one say that it was like the the collective ego took over the truth in that moment or what happened actually Jesus was an enlightened being and in that sense he he was not entirely in touch with his body the body did not have the same meaning for him as it did for other people so enlightened beings generally are enlightened because they are in samadhi states they go into states where there is a dissolution of the identity where they don't connect with the body as much as others do and as they go further and further into these samadhi states into cosmic states they connect with the corporeal and terrestrial part of their being becomes less and less when they do re-enter into the body when they become more aware there's still always a sort of a disconnect with the body and also partially a disconnect with every everyone's intentions around to them the world appears different they do not see the the falsehood they basically are in touch with the truth and less with the falsehood in existence around so with him in his case he did not actually connect with that possibility although he knew he would be you know betrayed he did not connect with the possibility really of what would actually happen and how much suffering was actually involved which is also why when he was on the cross he looked up and he was said to have uttered why have you forsaken me lord he said to god his father why have you forsaken me because he did feel forsaken in that moment because the pain was so extreme what that stands for in collective terms that entire incident of the crucifixion and the actual being on that cross is that when there are beings of true enlightenment and true knowledge that appear they are almost always collectively under attack and if they are in the body and very very present in this moment continuously present in this moment they can actually prevent the attacks every time something new appears on this planet the old will reject it will try to do away with it and he brought a very new thing to the to the middle east and the western world he brought the idea of a god that loves before that it was a god that punishes a god that gets angry you know and then he came with this picture of a god that just loves unconditionally and that was something very very new and it was very difficult for the people of those times to accept it they also felt very threatened by him because when he was declared to be the king that has arrived they confused it with the political king a lot of fear developed out of that also he was unable to see the extent of the danger to him and later on christianity has converted those things into him actually wanting to die to save mankind these are fantasies that are attached to his story because if he had wanted that then he wouldn't have said why have you forsaken me he was an enlightened being who did not realize how corrupt and how much falsehood he is surrounded by and when he realized it it was too late so 
So that is why that actually happened. And to say that he suffered for humankind is an interpretation. It's turning a very ugly thing in the history of his life as well as in the history of the world into something positive, which it isn't. Instead of saying what happened was, was wrong, one converts it into something which is glorifying suffering as being the path to the truth. It's a glorification of suffering. He rebelled against the, against the status quo, against the religion of that time, against the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And that has not been glorified because society doesn't want rebels. But what is glorified is the suffering because society wants people to suffer because when they suffer, society prospers. It's an increase of ego. The idea that suffering leads to the truth is false at the base. Suffering never leads to the truth. It leads away from the truth. And the truth never leads to suffering. It leads to joy. The ego leads to pain and the truth leads to joy. That's what the experience is. And if one asks the question, in that case, why did Jesus suffer on the cross then? The answer to that question is that it was ego that caused that suffering. How ego in an enlightened being? An enlightened being is, in fact, not completely in touch with the here and the now of the body. So when that enlightened being is in samadhi states, what keeps the body alive is the ego. So it takes a larger hold of the system than if you are present in the here and the now, really focused in this present moment, aware and alert of what's going on around. So that is why that pain then comes. Because wherever the ego is at work, pain will result. 